بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I basically just summarized right what what we should do. So four things here. Visiting the cemetery, it's mustahab, it's a preferred action. It's not really a sunnah. Qiyamul layl, you know, we should try to do it on our own. If, you know, we have family members at home and we want to gather and and, and do that informally, that's also fine. You can pray in a jama'ah. Uh, but what we shouldn't do is like make an announcement and and try to gather in the masjid and and make it a big issue. Right, a, a big uh, formal program that scholars say we should avoid doing that. Uh, this is more of a personal night where we connect with Allah. Duas, like I've mentioned, having a dua list, inshallah, preparing that and uh, taking it seriously. And fasting the next day is also a preferable action. We won't uh, necessarily call it sunnah. Some scholars call it a sunnah and some say it's just a preferable action. Either way, we should do it because it is preferable, inshallah. Now, things to avoid, preparing special food, holding special gatherings, beautifying the masa, and having celebrations. So why do we avoid these things? And the reason is we try to limit ourselves to what is mentioned in the, the texts. So in the hadith, we don't see anyone preparing special food for this night or holding a, you know, a special gathering, a special speech or you know, putting lights in the masjid, etc. We don't really see those kind of things in the hadith. So we want to copy Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the T, to the best of our uh, you know, capability. And so uh, there's a fear that if we keep doing these things, it can become a habit. And if it starts to become a habit, then this leads to bid'ah and innovation. And we do not want to innovate something in Islam because let's say in the future, some generations uh, coming after us, they may say that, you know, I saw my parents doing this. I saw my grandparents doing this. We need to beautify the masjid. We need to have a huge meal. We need to, you know, have a, a speech. It sounds like a good thing, right? It sounds like a, a huge, uh, you know, thing that will connect people together. But when we start attaching these extra things to our Islam, to our deen itself, and it's not really uh, proven by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then it can it will lead to an innovation. Now, if you just do this in a general way, like let's just say, um, you know, a random day that has no particular importance in Islam, we just choose that day to have, you know, a potluck dinner, a speech, a, a, a gathering where we pray together. That's fine because there's no fear that this will be ascribed to that particular day. It's not like when February 1st comes, we have to do this and, and this is tradition. But if we start doing this on the 15th of Sha'ban, people are going to associate these actions with that night. And then it's going to be, eventually it can be thought of that this is part of Islam. And that's what we do not want. We don't want anyone to do things and uh, claim that this is a part of our deen. So the last point here, if something not mentioned in the texts is done with strict punctuality or the belief that one should do it, Right. If, if, if something like this is done with strict punctuality or if it's done with the belief that we should do it, then it can lead to innovation. So if we start saying that, OK, 15 night of Sha'aban is coming up, we have to have a dinner. We have to pray together. This can lead to an innovation. So we, we really want to avoid that because there's severe prohibitions and admonitions for those who engage in uh, the, the bid'at and in innovations. So may Allah Ta'ala protect us.